some acorns dropping. Why do you know? They're eating acorns. They're eating acorns dropping. Saw some deer through the timber. I think actually it was him over here that we saw. And he ended up coming out right there. This encounter began the three-year quest for Floppy. I first got trail camera photos of Floppy in 2019 when I estimated him to be four years old. And knowing the kind of potential that he had, it was worth investing some time in the off-season to hang a new tree stand and try to lure him in in 2020 with a lush green plot that I dubbed the Floppy Plot.
Burp. <laughs> He's really deaf. <laughs> he is deaf. 100% deaf. Burp. 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 He can't hear it all. Unbelievable. That is unbelievable. It seems like every time we have an encounter with Floppy, we learn something new, and after the latest, he appears to be deaf, which I can only assume is tied to his injured ears and the way they droop. Although we would never catch up with him during the 2020 season, as regular as he was, we figured it would be a sure deal in 2021. Much to our surprise though, he was much less regular, and I decided not to put all my chips in one basket. First one off the farm? Yes, sir. Oh. <laughs> season I was hopeful to continue the chase and I was going to do everything within my power to be prepared. All the preseason due diligence was done and the Missouri opener was right around the corner so it was just time to be patient and wait for him to show back up from his summer range. Excuse me sir can you tell me what today is? Uh opening season. Opening day of deer season. Your first day as a six-year-old hunter. You ready to shoot? Do a little practicing? Yay. All right, go set her up, buddy. Although it varied the past couple of seasons, he almost always showed back up on the farm, late August or early September. This year, though, he was yet to show, so we were forced to focus on other deer. Also, as much as we travel out west, making time to get out with the family while the weather's favorable is perfect before we hit the hard rut. I about stepped right on that sucker. What was that? Dad almost just stepped on a snake. Yikes. That was a nice black snake. Mr. Brandon would not have liked that. He would have ran for the hills. <laughs> He's scared of snakes. Oh my gosh. My first deer. Give me a hug. I love you so much. My dear! We both felt mine! Oh my gosh. Dude, that's a great buck. Thank you. He's nice. Let's see. Hold him up. I want to see his points again. We couldn't have imagined a better start to the season as a family, and I don't think I could have been any more proud of my boys both getting their first bucks in the same season. And at that point, my season was made but I did still have Floppy on the mind as he was starting to become more regular and the rut was right around the corner. With rifle season right around the corner and an aptly timed cold front blowing in, I knew I was gonna need a north wind option. Up to this point, I'd been fairly conservative and doing everything I thought was the right way to get an opportunity, but it just hadn't happened, so I knew I had to try something different. It was time to get aggressive and try to catch him closest to the area he's the most comfortable in. All right, opening day, Missouri rifle season, it seems like. It's kind of hard to believe it's here already. It's November 12th, and we're out here for a pretty special buck. Whole floppy. If you've been following along at all whatsoever, you know the, the saga. This ridge falls off right here. And they love betting on that too, so it's good travel. Yeah. That's a floppy kind of, he, he kind of seems to split time. Fix your whole eight pointer. Yeah. He's coming right up the hill. He smells us. 
so we'll see what happens. He's right. He's right where that doe must have been, I'm guessing. Be real tempted. I hear, I hear the grunt. I don't see the buck. Yeah, the doe. Yeah, yeah. I just don't see the buck. They're all does. morning it's been. It's been an incredible morning. Picture perfect everything you could want besides shooting, launching an arrow. I had that close call with that six-year-old buck. I was like, I don't really want to shoot this deer. I'd have a tough time passing if he came by at 20, but then I look up and here comes Floppy cruising down the ridge. He jumps the fence at probably 100 yards. And I just had a feeling the direction he was headed, and he was heading up to this ridge to bed. And that's what he did, I called to him. And he actually did hear, he's not completely deaf. So, he actually did hear. But, didn't come, he wasn't interested. Good to lay eyes on him, though. Only saw him once from the stand last year, I think, so. So I know he likes to bed on this ridge, and just, the encounter the other day where he came across, there's a fence that runs right along here by the stand of the camera and he jumped the fence, headed right up to that ridge. I think he's coming from these bigger fields where there's actual ag. Obviously the rut's coming here, you know, the rut's in full swing, so it's nobody's predictable, but he definitely loves to be spending time in this area. We just gotta figure out how we can intercept him. It's the 14th of November here in Missouri, and I am stuck hunting old floppy. We're, we're battling it out. He's seven years old, been hunting him for, for three years. He's been a really tough one to figure out, but he has been fairly regular recently in this area. I had him a few nights ago in this food plot just right here to our east, so 
Hopefully tonight is the night. Floppy's really, he's one of those deer I don't like to lose. And I've been losing for quite a while. He's coming. He's already like kind of nervous, active. All right, he just put his head down. He's right by the tree line. I'm not even gonna call to him. He's already made his mind up. So dang close again. One more piece of the puzzle. Back up on the hardwoods tonight. Big heavy ten. Okay, he's coming up directly to us, right behind that shag bark tree. Let's get the right, Steve. At this point in the game of cat and mouse with Floppy, I'm digging for any and all details. The more obvious things weren't adding up and he was unlike any deer I'd ever hunted, almost as if the lack of the one sense heightened the others. He knew exactly what he needed to do to survive in an area where few reach his age. He went the other day. You gotta be kidding me. I don't know. Let's see, he's cruising across the ridge right there. Back in the tree this morning, and it is just howling. I saw Floppy cross the same spot he did the other day, headed up into this bedding area where he likes to bed. Man, I've, I've never been this focused on locking down a deer in his pattern. He's the most regular, irregular buck that I've ever hunted. I've literally gone through and marked every single time he's daylighted in blue, where at and which direction the wind was what time, whether it's morning or night. I marked the days we hunted in black. It's just, it's it's so rare to have a buck that daylights so regularly that you can't ever seem to see from the stand or get, get killed, so this one's got me. This one's got me baffled. Hopefully tonight's the night. We've only been saying that for three years. We 
finally got a change in the wind direction and are able to hunt down here on the creek. We've not been in the stand long. It took us a while to get in because there was a doe and a little buck up on this ridge. It's barely three o'clock. We got plenty of time tonight. Looks like it's poking through right there. I just want to give you a big hug. <laughs> oh. Oh my god. I... I don't even know what to say. That deer is the smartest deer I've ever hunted in my life the smartest deer I've ever hunted in my life. I don't even know what to say. 60 yards, do or die, it was do or die. He came to bump the doe and our wind was just it was, it was out of the west, but a couple times it swirled when we had other deer in this food plot. And I didn't know if it, I just didn't, didn't know if he was onto us or what. As soon as he came to bump that doe, he got a whiff of something. The wind had swirled just a tiny bit. And he was onto us, he knew it. And he was behind the tree, I had no shot. He finally took a few more steps out, 60 yards. 
I was strong forever. I took my time, picked a spot, held it on him. I think it was a great shot. I mean, I spined him, dropped him, but I think it was like spine through the shoulder. I could see the arrow, I think, poking out of this side, and he's literally dead right there, right in the food plot. Oh my God. This deer. I've lost some sleep over this deer. I've been, I've just never hunted anything like this. This, this deer is smart. Oh my God. Brandon and I have spent a lot of time in this stand right here. Last year, this deer was here every day that we weren't, it seemed like, taunting us in front of the camera. Just broad daylight all the time. We'd come sit here, nothing. Seven-year-old deer. Are you seven, four, five, six, seven? Actually, my first call has got to go to my father-in-law. You know there's only one reason why I'd be calling you right now. I gotta go get my gator. <laughs> get the gator, baby. I got him. I finally got him, buddy. Good deal, <laughs> all right. <laughs> Oh my gosh. I mean, you've been hunting him for three or four years. <laughs> yes. And he's, you know, oh my gosh. Long time coming. I can't wait to see. All right. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. All right. Bye. I've been waiting for this moment a long time, my friend. This summer I mowed a path right here where my buck came out last year. Just tore up with scrapes all over. Great trail coming out. Tore up with scrapes. Huge scrape here. Now he decides to come out on the far end of the plot to get any sort of wind advantage as possible. <laughs> I cannot believe it dropped him literally right in his tracks. That one blade. Look at the damage from that thing, dude. That one blade must have just caught the, the very bottom of his spine. He went through all the way to the top of the lungs, jamming on the other side. <laughs> that is insane. I literally grabbed another arrow for a follow-up shot. And I looked at my binos right away. I was like, oh, he's done. He's literally done. That is unbelievable. Look at this deer. This is one of the most unique deer I've ever seen in my life. Ever since I've known him. Look at these ears. They literally droop down. They droop down to the side and I have no idea why. I can't wait to take a look at him, but first time I got pictures of him when he was four years old, I believe. Um, had the droopy ears, which is the mainframe eight, and he's gone through all sorts of changes in his rack over the years. But I think he's seven now and just heavy as all get out and has like the gnarliest bases, the crazy brow tines, like points coming off everywhere. Just, an absolute beast of a buck. And honestly to me, <laughs> I mean, obviously a nice deer, big deer, big rack, but this deer means more to me than any deer I've ever killed to this date by far. I've had some pretty, pretty amazing hunts over the years and I've pursued some bucks multiple years back to back, but I've never had one that has been this difficult and this smart. And I have so much respect for this deer. He, he gave himself up one time when he was five years old opening day of season in this same food plot. Um, literally came out opening day before you we were even ready. My bow, or the camera's at the bottom of the tree. Pulled it up, by the time we got everything ready, he was already out of the plot. That was the only opportunity I really ever had at him. Seen him a bunch last year, he, he put us through the ringer. I just don't know what to say, man. It's just such an emotional moment right now. Like when, that's what, this is why we do what we do. Bow hunting is just, it's an amazing, it's an amazing thing. You know, these, these deer, you don't give them enough credit a lot of times. So, so, so smart. Lived most of his life right here. I knew it, but still couldn't ever get an opportunity at him because he was so, so smart. If 
finally came together. Look at that, dude. That's cool. It's almost like that tine, these tines come off like an inside deal. Ooh, ooh. You can turn that, turn that off, why don't you? Can't you? You would get it done. <laughs> Great. <laughs> oh my gosh, I love it. That is a crazy shot. Hey. I'd like to take my glove off. You know you no. don't have to be freezing every day, you guys. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's actually gonna warm. It's actually gonna warm up. But... Well, of course it's gonna you warm up. You did amazing. Proud of you. I told you you get it. You always get it. Yeah. Guidos to celebrate. I am absolutely beside myself. Finally, finally, I got the opportunity that was so many years in the making, and never have I ever before been so heavily invested in one particular deer. I feel like I learned more as a bow hunter from this buck than I have learned from any other buck ever before. This deer in this pursuit really is a classic example of why I have so much respect for these animals and why this bow hunting lifestyle means so much to me. Just saw a buck and a doe. Locked down, right? <laughs> <laughs> the whitetail hunt's the only thing written, boy. What, we, what we've been doing, you know, just wasn't clearly enough. And now I'm probably going to shoot him opening day rifle season with a bow, like 20 yards. Or maybe I'll bring the gun just in case. <laughs> Shows up at the bottom of the plot. Heartland gun hunter will ensue. It's one of the best ever made. They don't make them anymore. Sean tries to tell me it's his. Nah. He said Skylar broke mine, which is true. <laughs>